In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. It's always wonderful for us to gather any time. And especially when we gather to celebrate wonderful things. The beauty of our church is that it is a church. It's not one person, it's not even a group of people. It's everybody. And it's everybody throughout generations. And you might be surprised to hear, it is everybody even from the beginning of time until our Lord comes again. Because we speak about the struggling church, that's us, and then the victorious church, which is in the kingdom. So we are together. There are those who have come before us, whom we follow, and those who will come after us. Now the ones that come before us have an incredibly important role, and that is that we follow them. So the responsibility is partially theirs, and then partially ours. Their responsibility is to live faithful lives, to give examples of what it is to follow in the footprints of Christ, to give examples of what it is to be light in the world and salt of the earth. They have a responsibility to be an exposition, a demonstration of Scripture. Because you know, you can read many verses about obedience, but we all know the account of our Holy Virgin Mother St. Mary when the Archangel came and announced to her that she was going to be the Mother of God. She said, let it be according to your word. That sentence, that one thing that she said, demonstrates much, much more than many verses. And so the lives of the saints are important. And so their role is to live important lives as examples. Our responsibility is to follow them. What is the point of someone who is leading if nobody follows? What, if the, what is the point of having a great example, a great role model, a great demonstration, and yet we don't go anywhere with it? So the church puts a responsibility on all of us. And just as we followed and continue to follow in their footsteps, there are those who will come after us to follow in ours. And so our lives are important. Don't ever think it doesn't matter. I'll do what I want. Don't ever think you do not have a purpose. Don't ever think you don't have a responsibility. This week, you're speaking about the fruits of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of goodness. Goodness. What is goodness? When the rich young man ran after our Lord and he said, Good teacher. Good teacher. What do I do to inherit the kingdom? Our Lord answered and said, Why do you call me good? He is the only one who can be called good. He is good, as we say in the liturgy, and lover of mankind. So if good is God, then goodness is to be like God. And that's what we're called to do, to be like God. Of course, we'll never be exactly like God because we're not perfect. We're human. We're limited. But to be like God is to be all the things he is to us. 
The beauty of our faith is that God didn't demonstrate anything to us from the kingdom. He actually came down and he dwelt among us and he lived like us. He looked like you and like me. He walked like us. He lived like us. Of course, he was fully God and fully man, but he lived the lives we live. He wasn't rich. He wasn't even middle class. He was relatively poor. He walked along the streets like everybody else. But he showed us what it meant to be good. To be good in the way he dealt with people around him. His mother, first and foremost. You know, we always talk about goodness being, be good to the world. We must be good to the world. But we must be good starting from the closest. Good to his mother. When he was left to preach, and his mother and father came back and took him, he listened. When he was at the wedding of Cana of Galilee and not yet ready to do anything, his mother asked him for a miracle and he performed it. And the last thing he did on the cross was to ensure his mother's well-being by commanding St. John to consider her his mother. So he showed us what is good to those around us. Don't take your families for granted. Don't just think about good being to save the world. Good starts at home. Good starts with your parents, with your husbands, with your wives, with your children, with your brothers, with your sisters. Good starts where you are. Good starts every day. It's not just the big things. I want to be good because I want to go and dig a well. I want to be good because I want to end world hunger. I want to be good because I want to advocate for freedom. Those are all good things. They're honorable. But be good first in your home. Be Christ-like in your home. Be loving. Be sacrificial. Be generous. Be generous with your time. You know, there's one thing I always used to do wrong, and I think we all do it. Is that when I was growing up and I was at home, um, I always used to run into the house, maybe have dinner quickly with my family, and then run out, and go to church and serve, doing good things, but forgetting to do good things at home. We run and we serve others. Someone needs something, of course, do it. You know, when we're not good to people around us, we make them sin. We make them sin because they see us being kind to other people. They see us being good to other people. They see us being generous with our time. But with them, no. And so we make them envious. Why are you like this? outside and they're not like this at home start with goodness at home it's the best place because you know when we stand here together tonight after we finish we can be good to each other and there are hundreds of us here but when you go home and there are three or four or five of you only the five of you can be good to each other. And so we need to do that. We need to remember that God has given us to each other for that goodness. But then, we also need to be good to those around us. Our Lord was good to his disciples, his followers, his friends. He said, I no longer call you slaves, for you are friends. 
and he was good to them. When he felt they were doing things that they had no meaning, right at the beginning, he went to St. Peter and his brother and their friends and he said, leave those nets behind. Come follow me. Come do something important. Come help me. He took them out of things that meant nothing. So for us to be good to those around us, we need to keep our eyes on each other. How many times do we see friends, close friends, doing things that are wasteful, that are destructive, that will kill us spiritually? None of my business. It's their choice. What can I do? No. Leave that behind. Of course, we are not Christ. But we can introduce people to our Lord. We are not our Lord Jesus Christ. But we can introduce people to Him in our actions. Come. You know, when the Samaritan woman was left at the well, and she was amazed by what our Lord Jesus Christ had said to her. She ran. She ran to everybody. Who's this crazy woman? We don't even talk to her. She doesn't have a good reputation. Why are you talking to us? No, 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 I don't care about all of that. Come see a man who told me all things I had ever done. Come see him. I think he's the Messiah. I think he's the one. Come and see him. She didn't keep it to herself. She brought them. So if we want to be good to those around us, introduce them to our Lord. And introduce them honestly. Don't forget that when she said come, she said come because she had already experienced him. But some of us, we say, uh, you know what, go over there, the Lord, the Messiah is over there. I, I'm here, but you go over there. And we judge people. We, and our Lord said it to the scribes and the Pharisees, he said, you put burdens on people you yourselves are not willing to carry. Don't ever say, Christ is there, go to him. Say, look, I've met the Lord, come with me to go to him. Don't put burdens on people and make them feel guilty. Be good. That goodness that we see in the good one himself, where he lay down his life for his sheep. Our Lord said it very clearly. There is no greater love than for one to lay down his life for his friend. And you are friends. Are we ready, ready to be followers of the good one and lay down our lives for our friends? And heaven forbid that anyone should have to do it literally. I pray God gives you a safe, comfortable, long life. But I'm talking about laying down your life in sacrifice. Thinking about somebody else first. Giving to somebody else first. Giving of your time. Loving. Forgiving. Even forgiving. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love him. I just don't like him. Seriously, that's a bit of a cop out. Love is love. I don't wish harm on him. Well, great, thanks. Because that's not love. To love is not, not to wish harm. To love is to do good. Even unto laying down your own life. That is what love is. That is who God is for us. That is how he guides us. That's the example he shows us. That goodness in him. When he saw his disciples tired, 
He said to them, come aside and rest a while. Come aside and rest a while. That's what the good one does. But we can see people running. And we'll sit there and think, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that you're doing all of this. But I'm just going to watch from here. Um, you know, sometimes you come into the church and you see people working. People serving. And there are lots of people working. And here in this church you are so blessed. I know what a heart you have for your church. And I see it. And I'm thankful for it. And you are blessed with it. But sometimes you can go into places where everyone's working. And one person is sitting down thinking, um, yeah, you, you missed the spot. They, you forgot to do something. What do you think? Yeah, it's okay, but you know, this could have been done better. Just say good things. And if you can't just say good things, get up and do it yourself. Be kind to people. When you see someone struggling, say, come aside and rest a while. That's what the good one does. That is what goodness is. To be good is to always be the image and likeness of God, naturally. You know, sometimes you have to say, I've got to be good, I've got to be good, I've got to be good. You know, when you're dealing with someone you may not really get comfortable with, you've got to remind yourself not to say something bad, not to think bad thoughts, not to judge. I've got to be good. But true goodness just comes out naturally. Because it is who we are inside. If we are the image and likeness of God and He is the good one, then that goodness dwells within us. You know, I always use the example of um, a sponge. If you get a, a sponge and, and you dip it into lovely clean water, and you squeeze it, what comes out? Clean water. If you put it in muddy water and you squeeze it, what comes out? Muddy water. When we are squeezed, whatever is inside comes out. Whatever is inside comes out. And I think I've told you this before. I think if we look at the younger generations, if someone you know, think about your, if your grandmother is here, or you know, you know her well enough, or your grandfather, what happens when they get frightened? If someone scares them, Yadra, right? What happens if someone scares you? What's the first thing that comes out of your mouth? Don't say it here. Why? Because when you're squeezed, what's inside comes out. It's fine to judge us when things are going well. You know, if you're in a boat, and the boat is in calm water, it's great. The strength of the boat is only tested in the storm. When you're in a storm, that's how you see how watertight, how sturdy, how strong, how reliable the boat is. When we are squeezed, that's when we see exactly what's inside. Is it clean water or is it muddy water? So if I am the image and likeness of God within, and so goodness, the good one, dwells in me, in my natural state, when I am squeezed, what comes out? Goodness. But if I leave myself to be filled with pollution and defilement and sin, all the things of the world that we collect, what happens? Layer over layer over layer over layer. Over time, 
We may not feel it. When we're squeezed, goodness is not going to come out. Because the goodness is still there. It never goes away. And that's the beautiful thing. The image and likeness of God never leaves us. But it's covered under so much dirt that when you squeeze, it's that dirt that comes out first. That's who we should be. We should be those who in our natural position, in our natural lives, are sources of goodness. St. Isaac, um, the Syrian, um, speaks of goodness, saying the value of what love give, God gives is that we see the goodness in it because it is from his hand. Anything good we have has to be from him. But we've got to be careful because sometimes then what we do is we say anything bad is from us. No. Anything bad is from Satan into us. We naturally are good. As God created us, we are good. We, we, we get layers sometimes. But the core is always the same. The core is always Christ and is always goodness. So being good to our families, being good to our friends, being good to the world and introducing God to them and them to him. But the most important one is this. Being good to ourselves. We are often not good to ourselves. In a, in a variety of ways. Sometimes we're not good to ourselves because we do bad things. We allow ourselves to learn bad things. We allow ourselves to be in bad situations. We are okay accepting of being defiled. And that's, that's, that's understandable. That's clear. But the way we are not good to ourselves even more, which we don't see, is by always condemning ourselves. Always. You know, when someone comes and condemns us, we say, that's just not fair. That's not fair. You don't see me for who I am. And yet, when we judge ourselves, and I don't mean always excuse yourself. But I do mean that be fair to yourself, be good to yourself. Judge yourself fairly as you judge others. Love yourself. We don't love ourselves. We don't really love ourselves. We think we do, but we don't. We don't love ourselves because we defile ourselves, we pollute ourselves, we change ourselves. We put on masks and we change our lives and we change our characters. That's not good. Being good to ourselves means keeping ourselves clean. Now I'm looking at you here and you all look absolutely lovely. The hair's done, clothes are done, the makeup, and that's, just, that's just the men, ladies as well. Wonderful. Why? Because we look after ourselves. And we look after ourselves because people see us and we think, I've got to look good. We need to look after ourselves inside as well. Because we see ourselves. When we look into the mirror, people only see the outside. But when I look in the mirror, I see inside. And so if I see the lack of goodness inside, that's how I deal with myself. Be beautiful inwardly as well. Our Lord says to them, to the scribes and Pharisees, cleanse the cup from the inside first. And then the outside, that's fine. No one's saying, don't cleanse the outside, because even God cleanses the outside. 
when when we pray the prayer of thanksgiving we thank God for having covered us for covering us for covering our sin for covering our iniquity for covering all the bad things so I'm not saying leave the bad things exposed but be beautiful inside I have a horrible habit really bad habit I will tidy my office and you guys if you're revived you'll see it this week tidy my office looks great but then you walk in one day and you put one thing over here and you think I'll do it later then you put another thing over here I'll do it later then a third thing then a fourth thing and you come in in two weeks and what does it look like a jungle again but when we take things out and we clean am I sounding like your mother here you know when you clean things gradually every time you see something out of place you put it back into place see something that doesn't belong you throw it away you keep it clean it stays clean that's what happens to our hearts we see things that aren't good and we leave them I'll get that later I'll deal with that feeling later I'll deal with that desire later I'll deal with that hatred later I'll deal with that judgment later and it piles up one over the next over the next and suddenly we're squeezed and what comes up muddy water because everything we've left to build up so if we're going to learn from our Virgin Mother St. Mary this week we learn goodness the goodness that she had the goodness she had first to herself because she left herself in the hands of the Lord let it be according to your word behold the maidservant of the Lord she was good to her son our Lord taking him fleeing with him keeping him safe even standing with him at the foot of the cross as he commended his spirit she was good to everyone around her serving with the women sacrificing of herself giving her son for the world and she was good to us because she gave us such a great example not only to people who lived in her generation but us 2,000 years later we still remember her we are still inspired by her we still want to have the same commitment and the same love and the same goodness so what we need to do is to be good because that goodness only comes from God and only is in God so the closer we are to him the more it becomes natural the more it becomes simple, the more it becomes automatic the closer we are to him the more it becomes that clean sponge whether it's left alone or it's squeezed in hardship it is clean it is clear it is filled with goodness and so we too tonight we thank God for the life of St. Mary we thank God for her witness and her example we give thanks because she was chosen as the Theotokos, the mother of God we give thanks because she said I am the maidservant of the Lord we give thanks because she was the example of goodness and we give thanks because she having been the example of that goodness allows us to follow in her footsteps and to be as she was not only carrying goodness but also be an example of that goodness before the world and glory be to God forever. ما تنسوش ان الصلاح ده بيبتدي في بيوتنا مش مجرد للعالم مش مجرد علشان عايز اروح اخدم في افريقيا او اخدم في اي حتة تانية لا الصلاح بيبتدي جوانا واحد يكون صالح في تصرفاته في حياته 
مع أقرب ناس ليه صالح في تضحيته صالح في محبته صالح في أمانته صالح في تركيزه في حياته الروحية صالح في أنه هو يدي نموذج حي وعايش ويومي لوجود الله في حياته صالح أنه يفتكر دايما حتى في أسوأ في أسوأ الأوقات أن داخلنا هو الصلاح لمن الله نفسه والصلاح ده ما بيتغيرش الصلاح ده موجود وبنحس بيه احنا بس بن... بنغطيه والزمن بيغطي بنتألم بنتعب بنتعذب وبنسيب بنسيب الرواصب دي ولما يجي وقت الضغط اللي بيطلع مش الصلاح بيطلع الرواصب تطلع الحاجات اللي احنا المفروض نتخلص منها كل يوم دي فايدة الاعتراف فايدة الافخارستية فايدة حياتنا مع ربنا ان احنا بنحاسب نفسنا ونشوف اهمية الصلاح اللي هو بيجي من الصالح ربنا يحافظ عليكم يبارك في بيوتكم يبارك في الاسبوع الجميل ده ودايما دايما يدينا فرصة ان احنا نتجمع في الاعياد اعياد الديسنة واعياد النماذج اللي احنا بنعيشها كل يوم اللي احنا دايما